Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. I hope you enjoy. Story number one. Kilroy was here too, written by Trudy Visceral. It was, and still is, a joke. That was all it was supposed to be, a joke to keep their soldiers' morale high. If anyone were to make a simple extra net query, they would find entire pages dedicated to it. Or simple observation, and you'd find it in some random info cache. Sadly, it seems that the races that went to war with humanity and the AF just couldn't bother, or at least not until they had wasted a great sum of time and resources. The first with the Ganeshk. It doesn't matter how you pronounce it, they are extinct, and no one is going to correct you. They were essentially the galaxy's barbarians. Just showed up one day, attacked the formerly peaceful pariah, village burnt more that, and moved on. By the time they decided that the humans were a perfect target, five other species were at war with them. For the year that they fought, colonies lost, regained, glassed, etc. And then suddenly, the Ganeshk soldiers started asking in a very strange question to their human slaves. Who is Kilroy? The humans laughed even when they were punished for it. The rest of the species was dumbfounded, however. When several Ganesk soldiers also asked them that question, not like they were going to answer them whilst the barbarians were burning the colonies to the ground. But the survivors brought this up with the humans, and then Gilroy started appearing on alien worlds as well. The Ganesk warlords were convinced that this was either an elite squadron of their greatest warriors, so they started a hunt. A planet to the soldiers that kills or captures Kilroy. This was when the humans started to take advantage of the enemy's naivety. Entire Ganesh fleets would warp away from battle and into ion clouds, essentially stranded and left to starve. Others would stop their offensive on a base coral colony, turn right around and run as fast as they could, straight into a field of mines. After all, the Ganesh were to receive the message from the seemingly friendly source yelling at the top of their lungs that Kilroy is here. They'd immediately stop whatever they were doing and attempt to earn themselves a personal planet. This went on for a while before the Ganeshk finally understood. The pariah, slave who didn't have the will to fight anymore in just two months. They were the biggest fools of the galaxy, lost nearly three quarters of the offensive to their investigative incompetence. The remaining fourth was barely enough to hold the combined forces of six allied species descending upon their home world for some minutes. After a mere year and two months, they were completely gone from the galaxy. That, and the alliance was formed from the six races that fought the barbarians. The second to fall was a rogue AI, made by a now extinct race of what all the humans call fish people. This AI had reached the conclusion that sentient life was the detriment to the galaxy, so it sought to exterminate everything. Every man, woman, child, and any mention or sign of sentient life. Wiped, which is why the fish people were never given a name. We only ever learned of them by the dying words of the AI. How did it die? After some months of warfare, the now-called Allied Forces noticed that the AI didn't bother investigating much. It just located resources made in Armada and headed for the next sign of sentience. Sometimes, though, it actually checked the database of a downed ship or exterminated colonies for star charts. They also noticed from the downed drones that the AI didn't bother with firewalls or any form of security. These were made for very fast mass production, so they took a page from their war against the Ganeshk and hacked a drone, put some info onto the little someone called Kilroy, and sent it back. Suddenly, the AI decided that this little star about to go supernova was the most interesting thing in the universe. And then, it's extremely radioactive star. And then, some empty pockets of dead space with no resources to refuel. And then, this little planetoid dangerously close to the black holes of Ent Horizon. This went on for a year or so, until all that remained was the main AI core in its main body, or what was left of it, warping near a human colony. They knew they held no chance face to face against the never ending replicator, so they just made the AI afraid. Kilroy was here, there, and everywhere, and the AI wanted the sentient super creature gone. It just so happens 
that all the places this Kilroy was last seen were the most dangerous places in the galaxy, according to the star charts the drone recovered. Perhaps the AI was giving too much credit. Malfunctioning VI would be more accurate, but alas, it was not the last. After copying everything off its memory banks and hearing its last words, the humans, after trying and failing to hack its main processes after all, this wasn't another mass-produced drone, just stuck some nuclear fusion warheads to it and forced it to warp back into a pocket of dead space. Some months later, the colonists saw one out-of-place dot in the sky, for that night only, and the Alliance had access to nanotechnology now. The last was a hive mind of giant bugs. The humans were surprised, not because of the sudden planet-sized ship appearing in allied space, but by the fact that this hadn't happened earlier. Regardless, if you've been paying attention, you could guess where this is going. They shared blows for months. They couldn't get rid of the giant planet hive floating right there, no matter what they threw at it. There was always a drone ship ready to take the blow. They could barely repel the attacks to the colonies and stations only to be overwhelmed by another equally strong horde showing up in the slater. And then, just one of many drones finds the now all too familiar Kilroy was here, painted on a wall of a colony it was invading. And then another, and another, and another. It was speculated that the queen of these creatures had assumed the same as the previous two combatants at this point. As such, it started abducting, not killing people, and the second the High Command of Allied Voices noticed this, suddenly Kilroy was this looming force threatening to eliminate the Hive in its entirety. Huge swaths of drones would show up at one place, only to get engulfed in plasma cloud from the many mines that were laid there. Or a giant scout drone fleet was vanishing after it going to what was assumed an uncharted space. All because the captured, after being asked, would tell the same story. Kilroy was here. And here they went, directly into traps laid by the Alliance. It took a very long time before the Queen caught up, and by then, they had forgotten their previous security checkups to their captured, and suddenly, the Queen was sterile. The drones took many months to finally start to decline in number, but quickly fell after that. And now, the Alliance had access to planet-sized ships with more alien technology. Now, these are only the ones that were completely wiped due to them not doing their research. The occasional dictator, or god emperor, or warlord, or whatever, showed up now and then. They'd waste many resources trying to find the shredded Kilroy, only to realize that they were played for fools months, or maybe years later, but the war still went on afterwards. And sometimes, it wouldn't even be called that in arid planets. All those with extremely dangerous fauna, the drawing said, Foo! was here. Sometimes it would be called Chad, and complained about the invader's lack of sugar. And in a slave of planet stations, it was called Lincoln, and it was watching. I write this because we were one of the few who that decided to actually do their research before declaring all-out war against the Allied forces, because our scouts started reporting about this mysterious Kilroy. I wanted to report with complete security that this Kilroy was nothing more than a joke bone out of proportion and taken advantage of accordingly. But one of our spies returned with news about a supposed Allied Forces super soldier experiment that they called Project Kilroy. But with these people, I believe they might have let us know on purpose. End of story. Story number two. It's what we do. Written by Katoshi. Essek sighed through his proboscis as he showed his human friend the datapad, going through the fauna section from the drone scans of the newly discovered planet. He knew from the start that it was a bad idea, but Lee had been very persistent and wouldn't stop bothering him until he acquiesced. That didn't mean that he wouldn't at least try to delay the inevitable. As you can see, he quickly flicked past two pages before coming to rest on an entry about a creature resembling a Terran snail. The evolutionary traits are fascinatingly similar to both Terra and Ral, so he was cut off. Go back a page, said Lee, with an all-too-familiar tone. Lee, for once, can we? Lee snatched the datapad from his hands, the edge scratching the chitin of his fingertips. Damn it! He just had them polished. Ha! I knew it! Lee almost squealed in delight as he found a page Essek had tried to hide. Lee, no, 
Essek whined, resting his face against the palms of his hands, a reaction he hadn't realized that he had adopted. Lee, yes, the human shouted before connecting to his crew via wrist-mounted communicator. Yo, the rumors were true. Grab the capture gear, boys. I'll be down in five minutes. We're leaving in twenty. Loud whoops were heard over the comms before Lee hung up and grabbed his bag. I'll catch you later, bro. He waved to Essek and began walking out of the lab. Essek slumped against the desk. What is wrong with you guys? Why do you insist on trying to domesticate everything, even apex predators and other hazardous fauna? He shouted at Lee, who was halfway out of the door. Lee stopped, looked over his shoulder and grinned. It's in our nature. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to get me a land shark. He whooped and took off. Ah, <sighs> fucking humans. End of story. I would quickly like to thank the Tier 5 members, Marky, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnolds, Oakfield, Lord Azricol, and it's difficult to pronounce. Thank you very much.